Hello, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the weekly delve into the lives and loves of the world's most ludicrous conspiracy theorists. The show is, of course, named after a man called Mark Steele, who is often referred to as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, because, amongst other things, he's the guy who believes that lampposts are, in fact, a deadly cyber weapon that will decimate the entire population by the year 2025, approximately six months into the future from the time that I record this. It's a frightening theory, if true, but thankfully it isn't. Like everything else Mark Steele says, it's complete nonsense that, that anybody with half a brain can immediately dismiss as the ravings of a lunatic. But Mark Steele seems like an absolute goddamn genius compared to the two that we are about to introduce ourselves to today. On the left we have Richard Vobes, and he is the purveyor of a weekly show on YouTube that regularly interviews some of the most bizarre and unsavoury characters that you might ever find on any YouTube channel. And believe me, I watch a lot of Russell Brand these days, so I know all about unsavoury people. And on the right we have a chap called Colin Wyatt, who runs a, a website called Happy Mind, Happy You. And as we're about to learn, Colin Wyatt is far more than unhinged. If, if there was a way of removing all of the hinges from the universe and, and then reducing them down to their atomic components and, and then blasting those atomic components into our ever-living sun, that would be the kind of unhinged that we're about to experience as soon as Colin Wyatt opens his incredibly stupid mouth. This white vinegar, organic white vinegar, as uh, some people say, or others people say, I've just used ordinary white vinegar, not malt vinegar that you shove on your chips. And you, what do you do? You heat it up, and the vapours of that are supposed to, for all the way from down here, right up to 37,000 feet, is supposed to dissolve the th I mean, it sounds preposterous. If Richard Vobes thinks that what we're about to hear from Colin Wyatt sounds like nonsense, then that means that we're in for a very wild ride. Because Richard Vobes is a man who simultaneously believes in just about every conspiracy theory there is. In order to put together his daily YouTube show, which features 99% conspiracy theory content, he has to scrape the bottom of the barrel. Just about every single word that comes out of his or his guest's mouth is, to your ear and, and my ear, completely preposterous. But Richard Vobes never expresses the tiniest bit of scepticism at all. He embraces all of these conspiracy theories even when they contradict one another. As far as I know, this is the only time that Richard has expressed the tiniest bit of scepticism towards one of his guests' theories. Which is why we know that what we are about to hear is going to be so utterly unhinged as to defy the complete existence of hinges. It's, it's going to be so bonkers uh, as if it had been bonked repeatedly on its cranium, uh, all sense bashed out of it and us. Now, prepared, we are able to view the world with freshly destroyed brains, which is presumably the only state of mind that will render us fully able to, to understand what Colin Wyatt is about to say. So I went to uh, Pets at Home, I bought a cheap little um, dog bowl, and uh, I bought uh, a bucket from the pound store, uh, a metal one, uh, I put some candles in there, and I'm thinking this, who knows, right? So. Colin Wyatt is clearly one of our generation's most brilliant experimental scientists. I'm reminded, in fact, of uh, Mark Steele's staggering jar of beans experiment that I, I covered a few months ago. This is science of the same quality and calibre. So let's consider Colin's apparatus. We have a metal bucket into which various candles have been placed. They have been lit, and on top of this bucket has been placed a metal dog food bowl. I presume some small amounts of gaps have been left so that atmospheric oxygen can reach the wicks of those candles and sustain combustion, because that's the critical thing here. 
the heat from those candles is warming the bowl. And the warmth of that bowl is in turn warming a fluid which has been placed in that bowl. You've guessed it, the white vinegar, but not malt vinegar, that was alluded to earlier. And something truly wonderful is going to happen. And that, dear friends, is what Colin is about to reveal. I did that. The heat then creates the bowl to get hot, which actually starts to create evaporation in the uh, white vinegar. So that was on the morning that when you saw that um, that gray skies, that was what was there. And then I hit the stuff up and it cleared it. And that's what you saw afterwards it was the blue sky. Everything's starting to clear. Can you imagine Colin's surprise? The same day that Colin warmed a dog bowl full of white vinegar. The British weather changed. In spring, what are the chances of something like that happening? It, it, it truly boggles the mind, which is why Colin Wyatt, that brilliant experimentalist, decided to invest further in this staggeringly important scientific experiment. So I upgraded to two bowls. I thought, right, I'm going to try two. And the amount of candles right. I was getting through, and I was like, it's got to be another way. So then I bought one of them little camp stoves, like what we'd made the cacao on. Um, yeah. And I bought two of them. I upgraded to two, and I, but that you get through quite a bit of gas, and the gas isn't cheap from those little canisters. So no. yesterday I upgraded again, and I bought myself a camp stove with the 15 kilogram, <laughs> and I thought, that should right. last a little while. Yeah. So uh, it's been out there all day doing its thing. Colin Wyatt has discovered that real science costs money. Take, for example, the Large Hadron Collider. It's a spectacular scientific instrument built deep beneath the mountains just next to Geneva in, in Switzerland. This machine is capable of accelerating particles to fascinating speeds, and it has been upgraded a number of times since its original construction, each of those upgrades costing maybe hundreds of millions of dollars. But it's all worth it for the discoveries that the people who have built and now operate that machine have, have been able to, to generate through their diligence and hard work. In Colin Wyatt's case, the investment is a 15 kilogram tank of propane gas that you can obtain from most garden centers. And the cost is 50 pounds plus some kind of gas burner and regulator attachment. I believe this will be money well spent because the findings that Colin generates will amuse Mind of Steel viewers for minutes to come. And I'm not a physicist. I don't understand science very much. Right. But I understand enough to know that, you know, nothing's unconnected from the next thing. Science, mainstream science would teach you that it is. But actually, mm. the more we look into quantum physics and everything else, we start seeing that nothing is separate from anything and nothing is really even here. I don't think anybody watching this show will have confused Colin Wyatt for a scientist. In fact, we knew that he was not a scientist within about five seconds of him opening his stupid mouth and allowing that flow of idiocy to be emitted therein. We all knew that he wasn't a scientist. We all knew that every single thing that Colin Wyatt says is utter ridiculous garbage. But then having admitted that he wasn't a scientist, he went on to pronounce and pontificate a series of words that were sort of scientifically sounding, but quite obviously wrong. Clearly, the words and thoughts of an ignoramus. Now, what Colin should have done there was he should have said, I'm not a scientist, and then stopped talking entirely, thus gifting the world a much needed silence, but also saving the world from his incorrect statements. Now, let me give an example in a way that perhaps Colin Wyatt might understand. Supposing I said to the world, you know, I'm not a mystical New Age shaman, but I believe that the third meridian or solar plexus chakra is completely intertwined with the, um, the energy system, the car, in into which one's life energy can be focused uh, and allow us to envision our dreams on wet Thursdays. Now, anybody listening to this show who does have a background in mystical New Age shamanism might listen to those words and, and say, 
What on earth is Reynard Wilson talking about? He clearly knows absolutely nothing at all about our beliefs and practices and is therefore an utter charlatan. And, and you know what? I would be the first to admit that because I do not know of which I speak if the subject matter is New Age mystical shamanism. So, Colin Wyatt, I make a proposal to you. You stay out of science and I will stay out of your New Age mystical bollocks. Yeah, I often think then if all of that is true, we ought to be able to, well, like you've alluded to it, I suppose, we ought to be able to disperse all the nasty stuff in the 3D world using our 5D mental power, shouldn't we? And the fact that we can't means that Richard Vobes either doesn't have 5D mental powers, or if he does, it means they have absolutely zero impact on the world outside of his pulsating cranium. I wonder if Richard is starting to realise that. Perhaps not, because what you're about to see is a, is a little slideshow that uh, Richard has curated, and Colin has some very strong opinions. I, I'm going to share some pictures that somebody sent me. First one, clearly, um, it's obviously in some pub somewhere, liquid chemtrails, look at that. Um, and that's that. you can see that's in a bar. But it's, that's interesting in and of itself that somebody somewhere has put that out there. I mean, if you saw that, that might make you question what's going on. When I began making Mind of Steel last summer, I decided to take a, a sort of satirical approach to the New Age conspiracism movement. I thought there's no point in attempting to debunk obviously nonsensical conspiracy theories because I, I like to start from the assumption that my audience already knows that this is all ludicrous, and I'll just point out what I think is funny about it in, in a vaguely satirical sort of way. There's no point in debunking things because the effort required to debunk a thing is often vastly greater than the effort required to say complete bollocks. I just don't do it because life is too short. But this makes me wonder whether my approach is also completely pointless, because is there any satire however effective, that can't be misunderstood by truthers. Richard Vobes thinks that this obvious joke could, to the right sort of person, and I assume he means Richard Vobes viewers, indicate that the chemtrail conspiracy is actually real. But you know about Dr. Masuru Emoto and how he said that we can program water. So if you've got liquid chemtrail written on there and you're drinking that crap, like what have you done? What, what is that word and what is that wording doing? Warning and all this stuff on there. I think we can all agree now that Colin Wyatt might be Britain's stupidest man. And I say this having spent the last four years studying the life and works of Mark Steele one of the most ludicrous conspiracy theorists I could ever speak of. Colin Wyatt, in one paragraph of utter lunacy, has gone beyond anything that Mark Steele could ever say or think or do, because he believes that the writing printed onto a label affixed to a bottle containing, from what I can tell, just filtered drinking water, that the same water that we drink every single day. Colin believes that the words on that label can somehow chemically program the contents of the bottle. If true, it would turn upside down literally everything we know about water, chemistry, physics, bottles and labels. But Colin is the kind of man willing to entertain such thoughts. An expansive mind, a pulsating brain full of crazy wrong ideas just waiting to burst out of that beautiful head of his. A lot of people will actually, um, maybe like I was, be sceptical at that and go, yes. well, it didn't work. Or maybe people have tried it and it didn't work for them and that we'll come into the reasons why that probably is the case as well. Because it's not 100% guaranteed in all right. situations. We've established that Colin's apparatus is somewhere between zero and 100% effective. But the question that I'm sure you're all asking is, well, what kind of vinegar am I supposed to put into it? Because, uh, well, we, we know from the, the beginning, not malt vinegar, but we live in a world replete with many brands and kinds of vinegar. It's, it's one of the, the most 
plentiful foodstuffs that you will find in every single supermarket and chip shop. But um, Colin, you, you won't be surprised to learn, has an answer to that question. And I thought I'd, I'd go for the brand actually with the company that I really don't have any uh, respect for because of their actions that they took in 2020. Uh, they they have blue and red in their um, in their branding, and uh, but I thought actually I'm going to buy it from you because I'm going to cancel out the damage that you're trying to do with the money you're getting from people. So, what was the blue and red significant? Oh, uh, the blue, red, and white um, begins with T. Isn't this a brilliantly conceived revenge? Colin is going to buy all of his vinegar from Tesco, which, which is um, a somewhat overpriced British supermarket retailer, and. In doing so, he is going to engage in a sort of vinegar-based jujitsu, turning Tesco's evil into cloud-destroying good. Presumably, he's also trying to get revenge against the, the Cala Gas Company, which is why he's bought their bottles of gas, and th the makers, manufacturers, and retailers of camp burner equipment. It it's all a brilliant plan by a brilliant mind. How could he top this? I mean, we know the weather forecasters get it wrong. Well, they don't get it wrong. I think I think what happens is they're told what, what the weather will be. I don't think it's... For, again, let's look at weather forecast, right? Mm. Let's look at spelling, right? Magic. Mm. When you're forecasting, well, a right. forecast, so casting a spell beforehand, yeah. you're going to tell people what it is beforehand so then they can, that, you know, so it's, it's forecasting. You get it? For casting, casting, yeah, for cat because you you hear it before, and it's cat like casting a net, but it's with the weather because they tell you what the weather is. Actually, actually I don't understand what, what the hell are you talking about, Colin? Yeah. The thing that went through my mind as soon as I heard this is mm. the factory that makes organic white vinegar mm. must be doused in sunshine every day because <laughs> one would assume yeah. that the fumes are not going to be allowed in the in the factory because people will not like that and no doubt is vented outside and every day <laughs> is a sunny day no matter what happens it's a sunny day richard has just made a testable claim we can consider for example the aspel's vinegar factory which is near the village of Devonham in Suffolk, a, a region noted for its production of apples, the apples which they turn into cider, and then the cider gets further fermented and turned into vinegar. And it's, it's a well-regarded vinegar product that you can find on the shelves of many British supermarkets. But in doing so, much of that vinegar must have become evaporated, lost to the heavens. And as a consequence, if Collins bonkers theories are true, then that particular village, that area of Suffolk, must never see a cloud. If it is indeed sunshine every single day, then Colin has been proven correct, and I am wrong and must eat my words. So I hope we have at least one Mind of Steel viewer from that particular part of Suffolk who can confirm or deny whether you experience perfect weather all of the time. Well, we will definitely have plenty of sceptics <laughs> watching course. this. Oh, they love nothing better. Of the sceptics are coming. I would also say to the listeners as well that instead of attacking them and saying you're wrong and, you know, mm. all I'd like you to do is just say, I love you. They won't like that because it's just, <laughs> mm. you know, it's the complete opposite energy of what they're looking for. They're looking for someone to feed back to them. And thank you to them anyway, because if they, if they comment, it actually gets out to more people. So... You have all been blasted by a Colin Wyatt love bomb. And as a result, we are now rendered entirely mute, unable to argue back against the full force of Colin's empirical logic. And now as a consequence, I charge you all to go and find a dog bowl of your own, place it atop a steel bucket, and therein place a series of lit candles. Wait until the candle heat warms the base of that bowl, and then I want you to tip into it a good, generous helping of white vinegar sourced from that famous retailer Tesco, and watch as those fumes rise upwards and eventually 
let them tickle the clouds, and see with your own eyes that the clouds disperse, and whatever time of day or night it is, we achieve clarity of clouds, and that clarity of clouds is balanced by the clarity within ourselves. Because the clouds within our heart disperses, maybe the clouds affecting our chakras. Because, as Colin Wyatt has revealed, it is all connected, and our 5D minds have affected the universe.